Nancy Keener with Icon Apprentice. And thanks for joining me again. This will be our second project, and we're going to be doing Our Lady of Fatima. Now, as I said, uh, let me take it out of the plastic because it's uh, kind of glaring. This, this icon was actually created by the hand of uh, my teacher uh, and mentor, uh, Jody Cole, and it is used with permission. And uh, since it's the 100th anniversary of the apparitions of Fatima, I just thought it would be appropriate as we're praying to pray for world peace and pray the rosary as Our Lady of Fatima requested that we do. And so you should be able to get this color uh, reference copy from my website, which is iconapprentice.com. And then there is also the trace the uh, drawing, so the line drawing, you should be able to download both of those. If you have any trouble, you can let me know. Um, and uh, with this video, I will have a list of materials that we're going to need for this project. One of the things I did want to show you, though, first, uh, this is, of course, uh, made to go on the um, a 9 by 12 board. And I decided I wanted a little bit larger image uh, than the 9 by 12. So what I actually did was take some tracing paper, and I used the Strathmore. Uh, and this tracing paper, uh, it's a 300 series, uh, and it is the uh, 11 by 14 size. And I wanted to increase the size of the line drawing because the color reference copy, it doesn't matter how large that one is, all you're doing is looking for your highlights and where the shadows are for that and reference to the skin and, and the clothing. So what I did, I took my tracing paper and I took the line drawing and I cut the line drawing up into grids. Uh, now this is actually not the line drawing I used, there's another one, I made a copy of it. and. Then I did the same thing. I hope you can see this. I'm going to put it on my canvas here. So I took the tracing paper and I also made a grid pattern on the tracing paper. And then what I did was I simply hand drew each square. I would look and see what was in that square and reference it with the original line drawing. And then I simply increased the size. This is something that you can do at home. Uh, to fit whatever you want to do. You can reduce or you can increase the size and there are lots of videos on YouTube or on the net that will help you and assist you in getting these drawings the way that you want them. Now the other option, which I didn't do but I just didn't have time, uh, you can actually take this line drawing to uh, Staples or Home Depot or uh, uh, Office Depot or any print shop and you can ask them, I want you to blow this up so that it's an 11 by 14, and they will increase the size for you. Uh, you may have to buy your own tracing paper and maybe take that with you, but you can get that done and it doesn't cost you very much. So I just wanted to show you that I am doing a much larger uh, canvas than I did the last time, but uh, I think it's it's gonna be a lot of fun and. I tell you, I think we're going to have a wonderful time doing this and we'll all be blessed by it. So the first thing I'm going to do now that I have my drawing uh, is basically I'm going to look at my drawing and I'm going to decide if there's anything I want to change on the drawing. Uh, and there's, You can see on the color reference copy there's a globe that she's holding in her hands and it, inside the letters it says heart, H-E-A-R-T. Now, if you didn't want to do the globe, you could leave this outer line portion because that's going to be the crown of thorns that our Lord wore. Uh, but inside, if you prefer, you can actually do like a literal heart, the sacred heart of Mary. And you could put that in here instead of coloring that gold and writing in the word heart. Uh, that's up to you. That's a personal choice. So I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, and if you have problems with it or questions about it, you know how to message me. So the first thing I need to do to my canvas, and I'm just using uh, this uh, Frederick uh, canvas panel, 
and so I'm going to gesso this because I want a really nice smooth surface. So I'll gesso it. The second step is going to be taking our yellow oxide or yellow ochre, mixing it with a little bit of water and uh, medium, pouring medium, and uh, or actually a flow medium. And then we'll be putting this yellow ochre on our panel. So I'm going to go ahead and gesso. We're going to get a nice smooth surface and then I'll come back and we'll put our yellow oxide on and we'll do our dabbing because we want like a marbled effect on the canvas and then we'll set up and start doing our borders and transferring our line drawing. We'll be right back. All right so here we are back and we have about three or four coats of gesso on here and this is a fairly nice surface now. What I'm going to do is I'll have these two little cups sitting here because what I want to do is be able to put this board up on these cups as it dries because I want to do the edge of this board and make sure that wraps around uh, for the yellow, uh, the yellow oxide behind that. So I'll just go ahead and get my cups set up. and I think that's going to work pretty good right there because I'm just going to need it once I get uh, this board. I'll actually hold it while I'm... So you want your yellow oxide. It's already mixed up. Get quite a bit on there. Nice amount. And then you need your foam applicator and the foam applicator should be damp. And then we're just going to start spreading that over our gesso board. it's a little streaky because all we're doing is laying down this base color and we're going to lift some of that up anyway when we go through with our paper towel. So you should have some paper towels handy. That looks actually pretty good. Okay. All right. Lay that up there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a paper towel and we're just going to scrunch the paper towel up like that. And then we are going to dab. And we're going to create that beautiful marbled effect that just you're just barely touching that board. You're not doing a whole lot to it just touching and lifting, touching and lifting. And you know, do you can rotate the way that you're holding it just so you get some nice effects in there. Keep going. Let me get the entire board. Lost it. Look at your board. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Lay that up there on the cups. And we're going to let this dry. And when it's completely dry, then we'll come back we will measure our borders in and the borders are going to be two inches at the top, two inches at the bottom and one and a half inches on each side. And then we'll put our drawing on and we'll establish uh, where the halo is going to be. So uh, make sure that you have a pencil, make sure that you have your ruler 
make sure you have your trace, your line drawing. You'll want your tracing paper and a compass. So those are the things that you're going to need. As soon as this is dry, we'll come back and we'll get our line drawing on this canvas. So it's taken a while. I have this on pretty thick, so it's it's finally fairly dry. I've got a couple of little spots I want to be a little bit careful with, but I want to go ahead and let's start uh, measuring in our border. border in and now we can bring this over we can get this set up inside here in the border it looks pretty good pull this over just a tiny bit All right, I am very happy with that. Now, you can see that I didn't leave enough room at the very top. So her head, actually, this is going to come out like that. Might as well just put that in, round that off. And then, of course, her halo is going to intersect this border even more. Now the other thing I forgot to tell you, you do need this uh, painter's tape because we're going to have to tape this down so it doesn't move. And my tracing paper is not going to be quite large enough. to cover this entire area underneath. So I'll need to do a couple of different passes with that. So what I'll have to do is just lift it up, move it down, and keep this from moving too much. Just be careful if it's not completely dry in areas you don't want to be lifting the paint. I don't think it should though. That's why we use I use the painter's tape uh, because it shouldn't lift it but it hasn't really cured that well either so just be cautious.
you know, I am going to sketch in this line just so I kind of know where it is. That way I know where the crown of thorns is going to be approximate. The one thing I'm not going to trace, though, I'm not going to trace this rosary. That is something that once we get the robe and the flesh and everything else, that will be one of the last things that we add. And we can always put our uh, line drawing back on so that we know kind of exactly where we want to put those. And we can reinstate them with white tracing paper if we like, or we can just kind of eyeball it and do it that way. So at this point, I think I want to pull this up. I want to make sure that I've got all the lines. It looks like I have. Uh, that's why we use the red pencil. So I'm just going to kind of take a quick look. And let's see what we have. Take our tape off. And honestly, I usually save my tape. I just put it on the back with my protector here because I can always go back and use these then whenever we start to lay in our borders and our uh, lines I can use that all right so we have our beginning of Our Lady of Fatima <laughs> 